Hello my green fans and welcome back to the new episode of the City Skyline series Agram. We are finally in the episode number 4 and today we are finally finishing up the green horseshoe or Lenutzi horseshoe that we made the first part several episodes ago. And with PO local textures my second favorite thing in making these videos are Google Studio Earth uh, recordings I always place in the beginning of the video and here you can see how large the Lenuzzi horseshoe actually is in the center of the city of Zagreb. So before we continue and brush up on the history of the Lenuzzi horseshoe and uh, what we are building today I really want to say thank you to all my current and new subscribers and for the old support on the top 10 underrated channels video that was unexpected for my channel as well and uh, it was really surprising that uh, there were so many people watching it and I hope that you find something new and something that you liked in that video as well. Alongside building the main focus of this uh, episode I was also uh, focusing a little bit on the surrounding areas like this Miramarska underpass that is serving the traffic on the other side of the train station in Zagreb and it will do the same here in Agram city as well. And to remind us what we started in the episode number 2 and finishing it now in the episode number 4, the Green Horseshoe is a U-shaped system of city squares with parks in downtown Zagreb, Croatia. Uh, the Horseshoe was conceived in 1882 by Croatian urbanist Milan Lenuzzi and the parks were designed between 1883 and 1887, at the time when today's Dolni Grad formed the southern outskirts of Zagreb. And today, as we are finishing the Green Horseshoe, we will be focusing more on the west and south part of uh, the same, with the four squares and two parks that uh, consist that side of the U-shaped horseshoe. The first square and area we are building today is Trg Ante Starčević, or Square Ante Starčević, and uh, the Hotel Esplanada, which is just uh, next to the square. So, Ante Starčević was a Croatian politician and a writer. His policies center around Croatian state law, the integrity of Croatian lands and right of his people to self-determination. As an important member of Croatian parliament and the founder of the Party of Rights, he has laid the foundations for Croatian nationalism. He has been referred to as the father of the nation due to his campaign for the rights of Croats with Austro-Hungary and his propagation of Croatian state in the time where many politicians sought unification with other South Slavs. Starčević espoused secularist views, he also advocated the separation of church and state and argued that faith should not guide the political life and the insistence on religious differences is harmful to national interest. He sharply criticized Roman Catholic clergy in Croatia due to the fact that it sided with political opponents. He saw the Croatian Catholic clergy as servants of foreign masters who were instrumental in enslaving and destroying Croatian people on behalf of Austrian and Hungarian interests. At the same time, Starčević was not an atheist. He believed that civilized society could not exist without faith in God and the immortal soul, which is why he saw atheists as untrustworthy. Adjacent to uh, Square of Ante Starčević is the Hotel Esplanada, which is a historic luxury hotel in Zagreb. It was built in 1925 to provide accommodation of the passengers of the famous Orient Express train, which traveled between Paris and Istanbul. In 1917, an international tender was announced in which a number of prominent architects participated and the winner was Germanist Otto Rhein, whose original plans were modified by the Zagreb architect Dionis Sunko. Today most people consider Sunko to have been the architect of this building from the Belle Epoque era. The hotel was given the name Esplanade, which in its original form has the meaning field probably because it was built on a vast plain to the west of the station. The hotel was the center of Zagreb social life, especially in the 1920s. According to legend, the first Croatian striptease party was held there at a farewell celebration 
for an Italian count. During the years, the Hotel Esplanada was awarded many rewards and it is the most expensive and most luxurious hotel in Zagreb to date. Many world-famous personalities have stayed there, among some musicians, movie stars and world politicians. Among some of them are Josephine Baker, Laurence Olivier, Queen Elizabeth II, Richard Nixon, Alfred Hitchcock, Catherine Deneuve, Yves Montand, Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones and Ike and Tina Turner. Next to the Hotel Esplanada we have Croatian Pension Insurance Institute and behind it we have the Adrenaline Park that was recently renovated and is also connected by a pedestrian bridge to the botanical garden that is right next to that. And now we are coming to my favorite part of the Green Horseshoe and that is the square where is the Croatian National Theater. Not only because I'm a lover of uh, good music and uh, opera, also because my husband works there as an opera singer. He is also one of the more important parts to my channel because he helped me make my logo and he also made the intro that you are watching in every Agram episode so far. And as there are many recordings of the performances from Croatian National Theatre on YouTube, in a way he is an even bigger YouTube celebrity in a family. The Croatian National Theatre got its purpose-built building in 1895 that is located on the Republic of Croatia Square. Also, Austro-Hungarian Emperor Franz Josef I was at the unveiling of the new building during the visit to the city in 1895. The building itself was project of famed Viennese architects Ferdinand Fellner and Hermann Helmer, whose firm had built several theaters in Vienna. Celebrations marking the 100th anniversary of the building were held on October 14, 1995. Many Croatia's leading artists have worked at the theater. Its first manager and dramatist was the Greek Croatian poet Dimitri Demeter a leading activist of the Croatian National Revival mo Movement, with Ivan Zaitz as the first conductor. Jakov Gotovac was the theater's opera conductor from 1923 to 1958. The famous Croatian theater director Branko Gavela began his career here, as did the first Croatian pr prima ballerina Mia Čorak Slavenska. A notable comic opera Eros onog svijeta Ero the Joker premiered in the theater in 1935. After Croatian National Theater and the Square of Republic of Croatia, we have the Square of Brothers of Majuranic, where you have the Academy of Dramatic Arts and also nice greenery and uh, forested area where you can sit and relax on your walk in the Dolni Grad. One of the brothers Majuranic was Ivan Majuranic. He was a Croatian poet, linguist, lawyer and a politician who is considered to be one of the most important figures in Croatia's political and cultural life in the mid-19th century. Majuranic served as band of Kingdom of Croatia Slavonia between 1873 and 1880 and since he was the first band not to hail from old nobility, he was known as Ban Puchanin, also Ban Commoner. The last square that we built today is Marko Marulic Square. He was a Croatian poet, lawyer, judge and a Renaissance humanist who coined the term physiology. According to George Goethe, Marulic's epic poem Udita is the first long poem in Croatian and gives Marulic a position in his own literature comparable to Dante in Italian literature. Also on the square you can find Croatian state archives and two buildings that are part of the Faculty of Natural Science and Mathematics University.
And the last thing we are building today is agrobotanical garden and that is maybe the nicest part of the green horseshoe as uh, it is the most green and the most peaceful place to be. Uh, it is located in downtown Zagreb and it was founded in 1889 by Anton Heinz, professor of the University of Zagreb and opened to public in 1891. It is part of the Faculty of Science. The botanical gardens cover an area of 5 hectares and they are situated at an altitude of 120 meters or 390 feet above sea level. It is home to over 10,000 plant species from around the world, including 1,800 exotic ones. It has large ponds for aquatic plants as well. Some of Slava Raška's most notable works were painted by the garden ponds. And before the end uh, and cinematic part, I would like to say a few words about the music I chose for today's episode. It is the opera Ero Sono Gasvieta or Ero the Joker and it is a comical opera in three acts by Jakov Gotovac with libretto by Milan Begovic based on the folk tale. The genesis of the opera was at Vrlička Česma in the town of Vrlika at hometown of Milan Begovic. According to Croatian musicologist Josip Andres, Ero Sono Gasvieta is not only the most successful Croatian comic opera to this day, but also the only Croatian opera with presence in theaters abroad. American musicologist and music critic Ral Ralph P. Locke described it as one of two major Croatian operas alongside Nikolas Šubić Zrinski. So before I let you watch the cinematics and enjoy the air of the Joker final part of the opera, I would like to say thank you to all my current and new subscribers uh, for your patience while you were waiting the episode 4 to come out. And also uh, I would like to say to all the new subscribers and future subscribers that if you liked what you've seen in this episode and you want to see more, you can subscribe, ring a bell and get notified when I upload new episodes and new videos. So thank you a lot, uh, stay safe and have a nice day, bye! Stop.